All right, welcome everybody to another game analysis. This time of my game from the last round, from the ninth round of the Bangkok Chess Club Open, taking place in Thailand. And I was playing against a very young player, Chinese player, 12 years old, but already quite strong, 2150 rated. So, as requested, now you're seeing it from my side, from the white side. And I started as always with one e4, and he went for Sicilian. And he went for the accelerated dragon variation. So that's g6 here. And now that allows white to play the Marochi, go c4 and get a nice grip on the center. It's really difficult in the future for black to play d5. On the other hand, the setup for black is very solid. So he went knight f6, knight c3, now d6. Now it's important to not play bishop e3 here because of knight g4, and that would be a little bit annoying because now you would need to move the, the bishop again. So instead, going bishop e2 first to control the g4 square. And now he went for the so-called Gurgenitze system. He took on d4. The other main line is to go bishop g7 and then bishop e3, castle, castle, and continues from there. White is a little bit better, but black is very solid. Knight takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop g7. Now bishop e3, castle, Queen d2, I have to get out of this diagonal, otherwise there would be maybe knight g4 again, so I want, I need to play queen d2. And if now knight g4, I think I could go bishop d4, for example, and that would be fine. And here there are really ma two main plans. One is to go a5, a4, followed by queen a5. And the other one, the main move is what he played, it's the move bishop e6. So now I castle. And I had actually prepared this line, and it's quite comfortable for what I think. Queen a5, now b3, and I need to play b3 at some point anyway. Maybe it looks a little bit weird right now because I'm opening up this diagonal, but nothing is happening there. If knight g4, I can just go bishop d4, and this is all good for white. So he played the main move, rook fc8. And I go rook fc1, protect the knight on c3, and here he surprised me. The main move is a6 to prepare b5. But he went b5 immediately, and I had not looked at this before. But I figured it can't be the, the best move because, well, I had not seen it before, so I knew there should be something wrong with it. So I took with the pawn. If I take with the knight, then he can take on d2 and take the pawn on e4. So that would be a good trade for him to get my center pawn. But I can take like this. And I think what he missed was that now after rook takes c3, that just doesn't work because I can take back. And the important point is that after knight takes e4, I can play rook c8 check. And next move, take the queen on a5. And I'm up material here after queen against, he has a rook and a minor piece, I can take on a7. It's just game over. So I think this is what he had planned beforehand, but then he realized that it just doesn't work. So he had to play something else. And he played, he played queen b4. Which is a decent move. To threaten knight takes e4. And here I thought for a while, and I played rook ab1, which is a good move. The alternative would have been to go a3. Now, of course, if he goes back, then he didn't gain anything, so he needs to take. And here, bishop d4 looks interesting to threaten rook cb1, winning the queen. But I thought, okay, this is not too clear. You can play bishop d7 and go back to e6. Of course, I'm comfortable here too, but I didn't like it as much. What I'd missed, actually, was that after bishop d1, queen c4, knight d5 is actually winning. I was looking at this variation, but I thought it's not winning because of knight takes e4. But actually, it turns out that after rook takes c4, knight takes d2, now the important point is not to take on e7 first, but to take on c8 first. And now after bishop takes c8, if rook takes, I can just take on e7, take on c8, and I'll be winning. But after bishop takes c8, I can just play calmly rook c1, um, remove the rook from the attack, and now there's knight takes e7 as a threat, there's bishop takes d2, it's just game over. So this would have been even stronger than what I did, but I was also quite happy with my continuation. So let's come back to the game position. Right here. So I played rook b1. The pawn is simply to get out of this diagonal. And now he can't really take on e4 because I can just take back. 
queen takes and there's a skewer here with bishop a3 and I win the exchange on a8. And really it turns out he doesn't have any sensible moves it feels like to me. He played the move rook c7. What else can he do? He could play knight g4 I looked at but here I can just go knight d5 and it's just really good for me. He's, he has to take on d2. I take back and now this one is hanging and if he takes well I'm just up a pawn in the end game with the two bishops. It's just really good for me. So let's see the game. He played rook c7 and here I played knight d5. There are also other moves available. I could go bishop d3. I also looked at a3 which I thought was interesting. Now after queen takes a3 there are some ideas here. Rook a1 and now queen takes b3 let's say and now there's something like b6 um, because this pawn is pinned. The rook is unprotected so you would need to move the rook uh, let's say here and then this also looked really attractive of course it could take here for example but I don't know I didn't feel like going for this mess there's also another move here bishop d1 which is interesting and the point is now if he moves the queen I can trap his queen rook a4 and this looks quite strong but I wasn't sure about I think I didn't like um, knight takes e4 here maybe and um, yeah, knight takes e4 I didn't like. Now if I take his queen, he takes mine. If he takes here, he can take on c1 and take on b5. And this seems to me a rather difficult position to win because he has three pawns. His position is without weaknesses, so I didn't want to do this. All right, let's come back to the game and see actually what happened. Um, so rook over here, rook here. So I played knight d5. And here he went wrong, I think. His best chance, he has two moves pretty much. He can win back the pawn, but then he's in a hopeless position. That's what he did uh, with knight takes d5. Or he can play queen takes d2. And I think he should have gone queen takes d2. Now, I take on f6, intermediate move. If I take on d2, he takes on c1 and takes on e4. And this doesn't seem too clear to me. So... Um, I need to do it differently. So I take on f6 with check, he takes back, I take on d2 and I was looking at this position, rook c8, now I exchange rooks, exchange the other rook. I'm a pawn up here in this double bishop endgame, threatening bishop e3, so he has to go bishop d4. Now I was thinking bishop c4. If these bishops come off I just easily win. Also, I repair my structure, so he has to move the bishop. And now I was thinking maybe bishop h6 to stop him from uh, coming with the king. Uh, if bishop g7, I can just, just go bishop e3. So probably he has to go like e6 to do something, king f1, f6. And yeah, I feel like I have a very good winning chance here, bishop f4. Or actually another idea I had, yeah, bishop f4, I mean this looks really good. Or another idea I had was to go bishop c4 and not go bishop h6 but differently king f1 and let's say he brings his king makes sense right king e2 and now go bishop e1 and i think that's this quite strong and the point is that let's say he plays some move i don't know f6 or e6 whatever then i can go king d3 and he's running out of squares with the bishop on this diagonal if he goes here, I go a5, a, a4, followed by a5 and b4. So I'm pretty sure position is winning. Yeah, I mean, this actually looks like the most sensible plan. Bishop h6 also is interesting, but this one, it seems pretty straightforward. All right, let's get back to the game and see what happened there. So all the way back to this position. Rooks on the board still. Knight d5. Alright, so he took on d5. And now I take back. And you see his queen is hanging, his bishop is hanging, his rook is hanging. So he has to take on d2. Take on c1. 
He takes on d5, he has one back to pawn, but the problem is that I have the open file and I can enter immediately on c7 and he has this weakness and my pawns are really good here. So this is just lost. Here I played bishop e3 first, which I think is more precise than going rook c7 because here he could still play bishop d4 and stop me from going bishop e3. And if I go rook e7, he might even uh, create some counterplay here with rook c8. Uh, even though, okay, probably nothing's happening here after bishop d3, and <laughs> it's pretty nice actually just covering all the squares. This is also winning, but I think bishop e3 is more precise, just stopping him from bishop d4, and he can't stop rook c7 anyway. So, yeah, this is just hopeless. It's just nothing black can do really, no counterplay whatsoever. a6 I can just take, bishop b7, rook c7. He played king f8. And now I could go rook c7, but I just decide now to take on a7 immediately because if he takes it's checkmate. So he went king e8, I went b6, he went king d8. Yeah, I don't know, probably bishop d4 is. Yeah, but uh, of course this is uh, lost in many ways, for example, b7. Um, yeah, it's just all lost. So you went king d8. Actually, I was looking at this. This is a pretty nice variation. Bishop b5 check. Of course, rook c7 wins too, but bishop b5 check. King d8. And what now? How to win with white here? Nice little sequence. Actually, in many ways, probably. But what is the prettiest one, I guess? All right, got it? b7. And, well, takes here queen and takes here checkmate. So, I was hoping for this to finish the game in style. But of course, yeah, bishop c6 should also win here. Anyways, um, he played king d8, not king d7. And now, all I need to do is exchange the defender of the square, so I play bishop f3. He took. And now he played bishop b2. If he goes rook c8, now important that I don't take the rook, but I just move my rook away. And I move it to, rook, to d1, so I cover d4 square. And b7 is coming, and he's losing a full rook for the pawn. So, game over. So you play bishop b2, I don't know what he had in mind, I can really do anything, except for move the rook away from the c file, but rook c2 of course would work, or rook b1, but I thought okay, b7, it's simple enough. He played rook b8, I took, he took, and I just moved the bishop back and, well, nothing to do against b8 queen, I'll be a full queen up. So he resigned right here. So that was my game, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So it went pretty smooth. I think this whole system, the Gorgonitsa system, is not that great for black if white knows what he's doing. And. Well, let me know in the comments what you thought and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.